Welcome to ELT Gallery, the channel for learning language, language learning technology, and linguistics. Now you are following a series of videos on English Speech Sounds, or VESS. In this video, we are going to talk about speech sound production. Now let's start. In this video, I'm going to answer four questions. The first question is, what part of the mouth function as the organs of speech to produce English consonants? The second question is, where do they move? So where do the part of the mouth move? And question number three is, what part of the tongue move to produce English vowels and diphthongs? Number one and number two, are about the production of consonants, and number three is about production of vowels and diphthongs. So what part of the tongue move to produce English vowels and diphthongs? And number four, how high do the tongue part move? Now let's continue. Before we talk about the production, I think it's necessary to talk about what a consonant a vowel and a diphthong is. First, a consonant is a sound which is produced with some obstacle in the mouth. So when we produce a consonant, there is some hindrance, there is an obstacle in the mouth so that the air does not go freely through the mouth. And then a vowel is a sound which is produced without any obstacle in the mouth. So when we produce a vowel, the air goes through the mouth freely. There is no obstacle. And then a diphthong is a sound which is produced by moving the tongue from one vowel position to another vowel position. So a consonant is a sound which is produced with some obstacle. A diphthong and a vowel, or a vowel and diphthong, are produced without any obstacle in the mouth. Now, let's talk about the production of consonants. The first, this is the picture of our face. We have uh, the nose over here, we have the lips, we have the teeth, and we have uh, this is the chin. Now, let's talk one by one uh, of the uh, speech organs. The first is the lips, the upper teeth. Uh, the first is the lips. We have the upper lips and the lower lips. And then the second, number two, is the teeth. We also have lower teeth and upper teeth. And then we have number three. Uh, number three is the tip of the tongue. This is the tip of the tongue over here. And we have number four is the front part of the tongue. So this is the the next part of the tongue which moves, it moves up over here to produce a consonant. And number five is the back of the tongue. So this is number five, the back of the tongue. It may move up. And number six uh, is the uvula. It may move to this position. Number six is over here. It may move to this position so that the air does not go through the nose, but instead it goes through the uh, mouth. It also, uh, in this position, the air will go to the nose over here, so then we have nasal cavity. So when a sound is produced by letting the air go through the uh, nose, we have the nasal sounds. And then number seven is the pharynx. This is the, the path, uh, pathway for the air to go uh, out and to go in or to when we breathe in it passes through this path and then we have uh, number eight is the fat larynx this is the path where the food we eat uh, goes through the our uh, stomach and number nine is the vocal cords now so these are the part of the mouth our organs of speech which move and the quality of the sound on the type of sound which is produced depends on the part of the tongue which moves or part of the organs of speech on the organs of speech which move and also to the direction of the organs of speech to what organs of speech 
the organ of speech move. Now let's talk about the consonant production. Here we have the, once again, this is the picture of our organs of speech. And then from this, we have the tulips. So a sound can be produced with the tulips. By definition, a consonant is a sound which is produced with some obstacle in the mouth. So we have the tulips as the obstacle. We have the bilabial consonant here, b, b, m, w. It closes on the two lips close so that the uh, so that the air does not uh, co freely to the uh, outside. So we have the obstacle is by the two lips, and therefore we have the bilabial consonants. And then we have the next number two. We have the lower lip. We can also produce the uh, a consonant by raising the lower lip over here to the teeth over here. And we have the labiodental consonant. Labiodental is a labio is lab and dental is teeth. So the sound produced on the obstacle is produced by raising the lower lip to the uh, upper teeth. And that we have two consonants, namely the f and v. The three kinds of consonant is the interdental. Interdental, so between the teeth. When we produce a sound, the teeth over here may also be placed between the teeth, the upper teeth and the, the lower teeth. That's why we have the term interdental, between teeth. And we have only two interdental consonants, let me, and like in three and them. So when we produce uh, these consonants, or when, when we say three or they, then our teeth over here should move uh, between the lower teeth and the upper teeth. It, they are interdental uh, between lower teeth and upper teeth. We only have uh, two consonants over here. So we can check whether a person has produced uh, an, an interdental consonant correct or not by just looking at the tip of the tongue. If the tip of the tongue appears within the teeth, then the uh, consonant is produced correctly or the consonant is produced well. Number four, we have the tip of the tongue and the upper teeth. So the tip of the tongue over here, number three over here, can move to the upper teeth, to the back of the teeth. And then we have the alveolar. So an alveolar is a sound which is produced by raising the tip of the tongue towards the back of the teeth. That's the obstacle. The obstacle is the raise of the back of, uh, the tip of the tongue to the uh, back of the teeth so that the air does not uh, go out freely. Here we have several consonants. You have third, the, uh, sh, j, r, n, and m. And then we have the next, number five, uh, on the front of the tongue, on the front part of the tongue. Here, number four, this is the front part of the tongue. It may move to this position, goes up. And here we have palatal, because this is the palate, palatal. The front part of the tongue moves up to the palate. And here we have four palatal, namely sh, j, j, and j. So uh, this is the fifth type of English consonants. Number six, we have the back of the tongue. So in the back of the tongue here moves up to the soft palate over here. The back of the tongue moves up to the soft palate so that we have the, so that we have the vela. We have ka and ga. We only have ka and ga and also mm, as the vela consonants. Number seven, we have uh, the larynx. So a sound can also be produced somewhere over here. That's the uh, ha sound. We produce, uh, we have uh, it somewhere in the back over here uh, at the larynx. Then we have English vowel. So, English vowel, we have uh, several English vowels, and by definition, a vowel is a sound which is produced without any obstacle in the mouth, without any obstacle. So, the air goes uh, freely uh, through the nose. First, let's see the 
our church over here and our father church. Uh, here we have front, central, and back. So here, front is the front part of the tongue which moves. Central is the central part of the tongue which moves, and back is the back of the tongue which moves. And high over here, we have high, uh, this is the movement. The front part of the tongue may move to a high position. The front part of the tongue may move to a mid position. On the front part of the tongue may move to a low position. Uh, according to the tongue part, we have the front. Here we have, these are front vowels, E, E, A, 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 A. And then we have central vowels, only two, A and A. And then we have back vowels, you have uh, list five over here, U, U, O, O, O. So you can see with the, with the movement of, uh, of our mouth, we have U, U, O. U, U, O, O, O. Uh, those are the back vowels. And then according to the height of the tongue, we can have uh, high vowels. Those are the E, E, U, 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 U. And then we have mid vowels. We have uh, six over here. A, 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 O, and O. And then we have the low vowels. We have uh, three, A, A, O. So these are the uh, English vowels we have. We can identify a vowel from the tongue part, like front vowel or back vowel or the central vowel, or from the tongue height, like a high vowel mid vowel and low vowel. But if we just identify using this, probably it's rather difficult or it's not precise because high, this is high and this is also high. And therefore we need to make a more specification over here. Now let's see how we can make it more specific so that we can describe the vowel uh, better. Again, we have the uh, vowel chart. And then we can identify the upper high position. This is the upper high position is over here. And this is the uh, lower high position. The lower high position is for E and U. And then the, we have the upper mid position. This is A and R and A uh and O. And we have the lower mid position. And we have uh, lower mid is A and R. And then we have the A uh, here is the upper low position, and then which is the, the low position for R and O. And then from the description, we can describe the E sound here by saying E here is a front upper high vowel, a front upper high vowel. And then uh, A here is a front upper mid vowel. And we can say that U a back here, who is a back uh, upper high vowel. And then uh, O here is a back lower mid vowel. Now let's see the English vowels one by one. The first is E. Here E, this is the uh, front upper high E. We have mid, receive, and meter. E. Meet, receive, meter. Here, these are the letters which are used to realize on the sound E. E, E, and here we have uh, uh, A, E over here, A, E, and we have E over here, and consonant and E again. And then we have the A here, just let one letter hit happy and pity, sorry, one letter. Uh, vowel here, hit and happy and pity. And then uh, we have a. Here it can be represented by uh, e a, e a hat, san, a over here, san, and festival, hat, san, festival. And then we have a, again, cat, manner, contact, 
you only have the letter A here, which, re which represents A. And then we have uh, R, which, are, uh, which is represented by A R, like in part, heart, farmer. And then we have all like in pot, lock, cup. And we have R like in lock, R here with the uh, letter U like lock, carpet, butter. And we have uh, a like in boot, purse, permit. We have the ER, UR, and ER here with the letter R. And we have boot, uh, boot, purse, and permit. And then we have uh, U over here. This is the uh, back, upper, high U, the back, upper, high U. This is root, pool, prudent. This is uh, back, upper, high vowel. And then we have uh, U again. This one is the back, lower, high. So this is lower than the U over here. U is a back, lower, high vowel. And we have like an put full look. Uh, we will later have practice on these uh, vowels so that we can pronounce the vowels well. Now let's continue with English diphthongs. Once again, I think you can still recall a diphthong is a sound which is produced by moving the uh, tongue from one vowel position to another vowel position. And uh, let's see the movement. First, let's go back to the vowel charge. So here we have front, central, and back. We have high, mid, and low. If I produce this one, our uh, tongue will move up or uh, our tongue will close, although not completely closing. We'll close the uh, air passage, the mouse uh, E. And that's we can identify uh, a diphthong from the tongue part. The first, we have a closing diphthong. So closing because the uh, tongue here moves to a high position, close. It closes the mouth, closing. You have A like in male, take, say. Here, the, uh, the representation of A is AI, male, take, make, and say. You have say, you have uh, AY over here. Take is uh, if you have a consonant and the letter A and a consonant, and you have uh, E over here, the letter E, then you have A like in take, make, uh, shake, shake. Here you have mail and nail and sail. So this, these three are the representations of the consonant and the vowel A. Here we have uh, the vowel I, like in tile. So here, uh, a consonant and you have the letter I and the consonant and the letter E. We have tile, mile, uh, pile, supply, this is a uh, multiply, fly, and then you have finance like this. And then we have oil, like this is usually with O, -E or o and Y or O and the letter I, like boy, toil, and moisture. And then we have backing because the, it's backing here because the vowel is produced by moving the tongue to a back vowel position. Here we have uh, O, like in saw, call, horse, report. As you see here, the diphthong O here uh, is represented by the letter A and W, saw, uh, saw. Law, hall. You have hall, mall, and you have a pause, and you have report, escort, court. So O and R. And then the next you have our like in house, about, shout, and we have uh, O over here, hope, load, coach, grow. So this one is diphthong. We do not just say O, oh, but it's a uh, diphthong I. So we can say, this is not just A, but it's dith uh, diphthong I. So it becomes uh, like a diphthong, A. O, oh, it's not just hope. It must be hope, load, coach, crow. 
Uh, well, that's all the discussions on English consonants, vowels, and diphthongs. Well, if you like this video, you can uh, click the subscribe uh, button at, uh, below this video so that when a new video on English uh, speech sounds appears, uh, you can get the notification. Good luck.